linear parameter estimation. Um, so this is a huge topic, and by no means do the half an hour that we have today devoted to this topic will do justice to it, right? And so my idea is for people who've seen it, if they've not seen how to do this in MATLAB, they'll get a flavor for it. For other people also, just it's there's a lot of math that goes in this. I'm not going to go into all of the math, um, but the idea is just to sort of know about it, be aware about it, and be able to re read up on it later as required. So what's the general problem statement here? Is that, you know, we've all done this, right? You've got some data, you put it in Excel, fit a line to it. We're going to start digging deeper into what that process actually entails. And so that's what you're doing here. You acquired some data. You want to fit it to a linear model. We're going to talk about what a linear model actually is, what that means. But before I do that, I just want to also say next week we'll be doing nonlinear parameter estimation, right? And there might be a feeling at the end of next week that why not just model everything using nonlinear models. There's a, and there are many advantages of using linear models. They're simple to implement, right? They have in nonlinear models, as you'll see, or you may have experienced, you need some initial values for the parameters that you want to estimate, finally, right? You want to start, and we'll talk about this more next week, but in linear optimization, in linear regression, you don't need any initial values, right? There's no dependency on them. This, will, this point will become clearer next week. And also, each parameter that you estimate is itself a statistical variable. It itself has noise. Right? And so if you remember last week, we talked about doing sensitivity analysis during MRS, magnetic resonance spectroscopy. And I talked about adding noise many, many times and then repeating parameter estimation each time. Um, that was because that was a nonlinear problem. In linear problems, you don't need to do that because you can actually just have formula. You have formulae that tell you how much is the noise in the parameters that you estimate. So you can compute error, errors in your parameter estimates analytically. Points, these points, just to keep in the back of your mind, they will become clearer later on. So now let's talk about what is a linear model. So a linear model, and this is just from your reading, which I would highly recommend doing for this week for sure, is just something where y, which is the so sort of the experimental measurement that you're making, can be expressed as a linear function of the unknown parameter theta, theta not up till beta n. Note that your dependent variable, which is x, right, and the f1 of x, this does not need to be linear. So I could have beta 1 times sine t, where t is time, which is my independent variable, and I could have y is beta 1 sine t, for example, where y is sort of some measurements I've made on this sine wave. On this sine wave. That is still a linear model, because the linearity I'm checking for is the linearity in the parameter beta, as opposed to the linearity in the, parameter, in the variable t. Does that make sense to everybody? That, so the linearity you're checking is for um, that your experimental measurement is linear in parameters you want to estimate, not in the dependent variable. So f1 of x, f2 of x, et cetera, they could all be nonlinear in x. That doesn't matter. Does that make sense? So again, y is equal to mx plus c. That's like the equation of a straight line. We've all seen that, right? So m, the point is here that y is linear in m. x could be sine of t, log of t, exponential of t. I don't care. The linearity that I'm looking for here is in m. Okay? Then the other thing, so that's one thing, very important thing to know. What is a linear model? This is the definition right here, right? Next thing which is important to know is whenever you're doing linear regression, or in other words, estimation of parameters using a linear function, the number of linear equations is greater than the number of coefficients. So number of coefficients means here beta 1 through beta n, right? Just like m is a coefficient in the equation of a line. These are the number of coefficients. Number of linear equations would be the different values for y I have. How does this make sort of sense intuitively? Why would you do parameter estimation? You would do parameter estimation in a paradigm where you can't exactly solve all the linear equations you have, right? So you want to find, so, so you know that if you have three variables and three equations with those three variables, right, you can obtain an exact solution probably for those three variables. There are some conditions in which that doesn't hold, but, right? But if you have 10 different equations in those three variables, right, then it's unlikely that those, unless some of the equations are repeated, it's unlikely that 
certain value, uh, like one set of values for those three variables will satisfy all the 10 equations, right? Does that make sense? If you have 10 equations with three variables, right, unless some equations are repeat, repeated, you can't find a set of values for those three variables that satisfy all the equations. That's when regression comes in, right? Because what you're doing then is you're finding a set of values for those three variables which solve those 10 equations as closely as possible. Does that make sense? That's, that's, so that's what this means here. The number of linear equations m, or 10 in the example I gave, is greater than the number of coefficients 3, right, whose values we seek, right? This is the second thing, very, and this is called an overdetermined system of linear equations. So the second very important thing to know about, and this makes sense, right? When you, whenever you do your little linear fits in Excel, right, you have tons of data points, right, right? And you have one dependent variable, one independent variable. You're looking for two parameters usually, right? The slope and the intercept, right? When you're doing fits. So it is an overdetermined system, right? You have many, many data points, but only two parameters you want to estimate. Does that make sense? Everybody with me? Questions? Okay. This definition. Okay. So if I want to represent this statement here, right? in matrix form, which would make our life a lot easier, and you know MATLAB is very good with matrices, so I'll show you what that looks like, but I could write something like this. Is this reasonable to everybody? Note that it's M here and N here, which means that I have, again, N coefficients, right? So we're just doing matrix multiplication here. So Y1 would be F1 X1 times beta 1 plus F2 X1 plus times beta 2 plus F3 X3 uh, F3 X1 times beta 3 up till Fn X1 times beta n, and so on. Basically, here the y was just representing one data point. I could have m data points, right? And I could write, is this, is this clear to everybody? Is this something that people feel comfortable with, this matrix notation? Ask questions if it's not very clear. Again, you're just doing matrix multiplication here. F1 X1 goes with beta 1, F2 X1, which will come here, will go with beta 2, and so on, right? And so you'll have m, m different linear equations, and you have n coefficients, okay? Is m greater than n or n greater than m in our case? m is greater than n, number of equations is greater than number of coefficients, right? So this matrix here, this will look what we call skinny as opposed to fat. Fat matrices look the other way around. So this matrix here will look skinny, okay? M is greater than N, okay? That's classic for linear regression. And so why that's useful is this thing, this whole thing, right? This seems like a lot here, is this, four characters, okay? Y is a vector, A is a matrix, and B is a vector, that's it. And I'm gonna give you the solution for this, and that's also going to look very simple in MATLAB, and we'll come to that. But, so, but generally, going back to what linear parameter estimation is, you know why? Why are experimental measurements that you've made, right? Why is sort of data that you've picked, right, that you've measured, that you've acquired, A is some function of your dependent, uh, independent variable X, right? And so you know that as well. That's the assumption that linear parameter estimation makes. And all you want are values for these coefficients, or you want to know the vector b. Right? Is that fair? Everybody good so far? Okay, that's all you're doing. Okay. So again, you want to choose a vector b such that a b approximates y as closely as possible, right? That makes sense to everybody? You can't get a perfect solution. You want the best you can do. And mathematically, and we'll come to why this is a little bit, is this is the way we talk about it. When we say this statement here intuitively, mathematically, we're saying minimize the sum of squared differences between the model and the data. Let's build this sort of bottom up as opposed to top down, which is here. Model and data, right? So you'll have, you can imagine that this part here, right? These two matrices together, that's a model, right? I have, this is this here, 
this is a model beta 1 f 1 x up till beta n f n x. This is something that I'm saying. Y doesn't necessarily need to ascribe to that model. Y is the experimental measurement I made. I'm just saying that Y probably follows this model, right? So A B, in other words, is the model part of this equation. And Y is actually the data I've made, right? So this is actually never an e actual equal to sign as we talked about, right? You're never going to be able to find a perfect solution. So if you take the difference of your model and data, which means the difference between Y and AB, literally, and then you square it, right, at each data point, and then you sum it, right? So you sort of, again, going back to the Excel analogy, when you fit a line to the data point, to your data points, at each value of the dependent variable, take the difference between the line prediction and the actual data point, square it, and then sum it. That's the, the, the parameters that you calculate in Excel have minimized the sum of that squared difference. That's how linear parameter estimation works. There are many different forms of it, but the simplest one is this, okay? It's called minimizing the sum of squared, residu um, squared differences, okay? And the derivation is in your reading if you want to get to it, but once you've said, right, once you've said my, that my objective is to minimize the sum of squared differences between the model and data, then basically you're in the world of differential calculus, right? Right? You're minimizing something, right? We've all done this, right? So you can, you know, you can take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and this is a solution that pops out for B. And this is in matrix form now. So A is the matrix that's here, and Y is the vector here. And that's it, right? It's called the ordinary least square solution. We'll contrast it with something else later, but this is called the ordinary least square solution. Nothing too fancy. In MATLAB, very liberating, very liberating. A backslash Y. That is it. That's the power of matrix notation. You know in Excel how you have to just go fit trend line and then show equations, blah, blah, blah. MATLAB, 